Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be going over how to get a red anthurium, also known as a flamingo flower, to bloom. So you can see this one has been pretty rip on. It's been in the container for almost a year. I'm just finally getting to it now. And first thing I'm going to do is to try to break uh, some of the soil apart to get a better look at the root structure. Oftentimes people will buy these red anthuriums around Valentine's Day and not know and once the flower and once the flowers fade they won't uh, they'll get frustrated and throw them out. We can get them to reflower. We just need to take a little time uh, to rejuvenate the plant. Here I'm showing a close up of how I'm going to look at the crowns and we're going to propagate this by division which will help to rejuvenate the plant. So I'm separating first the two larger pieces here and then uh, I'll break some smaller ones out from there. I want to make sure that you have some root with each, of, each one of the crowns. And then try to take that remaining soil out of, out of the way just so you can see that the, everything is good and healthy. This looks pretty good. So now we'll go to the next step. All right, I'm back. I had to go run and get some pots. I'm trying to figure out what size pot I want. These are five inch uh, old pots from the garden center that I probably bought tomatoes in or something. I don't know. And I think for the larger sections, this would be a better, it's going to fit pretty good. And three of like to be a little bit root bound. So that's not a problem. And then the smaller one, like this, I'm trying to decide if I should do a three inch pot or a four inch pot like this. Hmm. I think I'm going to go with the four inch pot. I have bought these online and I don't like them. They're very flexible. don't like them at all. I prefer the pots to be a little bit firmer, but I don't want anything to go to waste, so I will use them anyway. So in this bucket, I have regular potting mix, which I have cut in about 50% more perlite to make sure that it's well draining. So we'll go ahead and pot these up. I'm going to put a little bit of soil on the bottom of the container. And then I am going to go ahead and put these in there. Too much. Just going to put a little bit in the bottom of the container like this. And then I'm going to backfill. I'm going to backfill with the, the potting mix. Try to, I'm holding the crown up while I'm doing this. I don't know if you can see that or not. Hopefully you can see it. I'm going to tap it. And this potting mix is pre-moistened just, just slightly. I'd say it's only about 20% 20, 20 hydrated. It's not sopping wet by any means. I'm going to keep filling it in here. I'm going to leave a little bit of a reservoir um, so that I can water it and it'll stay. So that's one. And I'll do the next one here, which is this one. This root system is a little bit deeper. So I think I'm going to go back into the original container with this one. I'm going to put a little bit more uh, potting mix on the bottom. And I'm going to put this root system in there. Roots look really healthy. They're nice and white. Just going to backfill it. One of the things that I like to do is I like to have multiple uh, plants of the same variety and I like to try them in different locations in my home. And so rather than buying new plants, doing some propagations is a great way to test that 
to test out your theories and test out the different lighting and, and uh, maybe humidity because different rooms have different humidity. I potted that up and I got a little bit of reservoir in there so that's good. That's number two back in the original pot. And then I have these that I want to put in here. A little bit of potting medium in. Get those in there. So I had an interesting problem today. Woke up and the house felt a little cold. The furnace went out. It is minus 10 degrees outside. Not a good day to have the furnace go out. Luckily, we have a backup system. Um, I have a gas fireplace and we're trying to heat. We're trying to keep the house somewhat heated while we wait for the furnace guy to get here, but not good. Not good if you have house plants. They don't want an extreme change. Uh, I don't want an extreme change. Um, so hopefully that goes okay. Not good to have your furnace go out and uh, and a below zero day up here. So I'm up in uh, zone four outside of Minneapolis and it gets cold here. This time of year is pretty normal to be pretty cold. So if you're in the store about this time of year around Valentine's, you'll find the flamingo flower there, the red anthurium. I suggest you go ahead and give it a try. The other thing we're going to do is we are going to trim back some of these leaves and try to encourage it to bloom again. So to do that, I'm just going to cut a few of them back, which is supposed to help it rejuvenate. It puts it into a little bit of a shock. And so we're going to see what happens. Cut some of them off. Cut off some of these older leaves. Hopefully by doing so, we will stimulate some growth. In nature, when a plant gets cut or damaged in any way, if it's nibbled on or something falls on or it breaks off, it puts it into a stress situation. And in what we've done by making the prunes is we're, put, we're putting it into a stress situation in an attempt to try to get it to flower again. So if you see one of those flamingo flowers in the store and you think, oh, they always die back and they don't flower again, try this and see if it helps. If this video is helpful, give us a thumbs up so YouTube knows to share this content with others. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great day.